Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Britt, creator of The Style Shaker, your guide to cleaner, greener beauty, skincare, and beyond. I try products out for you so you know what to buy, and more importantly, what possibly not to buy. Today I'm back with an update for the Ilia True Skin Serum Foundation. I reviewed this a while ago. Loved it when I first tried it, but do I still like it? I'm going through all of the foundations right now that I've tried to put them into one epic roundup, which is coming very soon. So if you wanna hear more about this foundation or if you're in the market for foundations and you're trying to figure out which one works for you, then stick around and let's get into it. Here she is. This is a medium buildable coverage serum foundation with a satin finish, $54. So it's not on the cheaper side. 18 shades are currently available. It's cruelty-free, gluten-free. It's in a glass bottle, plastic components. So I reviewed this back in April of 2018. It was my second foundation review ever on the channel. It was so cute to watch, I have to say. I had a really good time watching it. Most people cringe at that stuff, but I found it kind of funny. I did not show you a demo. I didn't show application in that video. Things have definitely evolved since then. I purchased this product. If you like honest reviews like this one and you wanna keep seeing more of them, please take two seconds to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I publish new reviews every week, so you won't miss a thing if you're subscribed. And without further ado, let's dive into the scorecard. I'm gonna talk about five quick things from ingredients, the coverage, application, the finish, does it last, is this shade range inclusive? Of course, my final verdict, so would I buy it again? You'll find out very soon. It starts with the first question, and that is, how do the ingredients look? Also, what do we think about the darker background? Contrasting. It's a little bit different. What do you guys think? I kind of like it. So the ingredients here, there is coconut oil in here. There's also dimethicone in here, which if you're a subscriber, you've already heard me say it a million times. If not, anything with silicones in it usually tends to break me out, specifically dimethicone. So I guess I should just say anything with dimethicone because I'm not sure about all silicones. Not a fan of it. I would prefer products without it in there. Other than that, this is one of those foundations that's supposed to be equal parts skincare and coverage. So it has jojoba oil, marula oil. Those two are kind of lower on the list than I would like. I wish they were a little bit higher, but there's also rosehip oil, which is in the middle, which is nice. A little bit more of that in there. And then there's an aloe base here too. So you're getting a lot of moisturizing ingredients and you can feel that. Do check the list on your own because it can be very personal. Next up is the shade range inclusive. There are 18 shades here, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video. They skew on the light to medium side. So I I'm not seeing as many deep or dark shades. Because of that, I think it's not as inclusive as it could be, specifically for Ilya, because their skin tint has quite a few shades. Overall there, I gave it a three out of five on the scorecard. Next up, how is coverage and overall application for this? When I originally reviewed it, I loved it. I glossed over this pretty quickly, mind you. The speed at which I was talking in that video was like, gah, 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 it was real fast. Pressing it in worked better than anything else for application. Do I still feel that way? Okay, well. This is a thinner formula, it's not watery. Pressing in seems to work really nicely still. That holds true. I'm not using the Kabuki brush. I wasn't swiping it on like this as much. Here's something interesting you might wanna know. So when I apply this over an oil prep, like a rosehip seed oil that I put on before I apply makeup, and maybe I do my gua sha with that, when I would apply this after something with oil in it, it wasn't sitting as well and it wasn't covering as well as if I were applying it over a cream moisturizer. I'm not talking heavy cream, just a light cream moisturizer so keep that in mind I have combination skin overall I would say the coverage here is light to medium you can do light very nicely it does go into a medium and you can build on the medium to make it stronger out of the gate I wouldn't say it was a super strong medium coverage sometimes you apply these things and you go Wow, that's really covering. That could be an advantage for somebody that likes a more natural look. So at this point in testing, I was comparing this quite a bit to their skin tint just to see what the real difference was. This was obviously the fuller coverage option to that. I'll talk about finish in a second, but finish is a part of it too. So if you don't like their skin tint, then this may be something for you if the price is right and the ingredients are okay. Overall for coverage here, I gave it a three out of five on the scorecard. Finish. How is the finish? So they say it's supposed to give a satin-like finish, which is not dewy, it's not shiny. It's not necessarily glowy, it's just got that little lit from within is happening. When I first applied it after the first couple of minutes, I wasn't really seeing the best finish. It was sitting a bit on top, so I was a little nervous and I thought, oh no, 
oh, it's gone downhill. But then I would say maybe 10, 15 minutes in, it started melting and meshing with my skin. It worked with the oils of the skin and it did provide that satin, more luminous finish. It wasn't cakey, so it wasn't matte. It was really a nice kind of middle of, I say this a lot, like middle of the road where it's not super matte, it's not super dewy. And it really started to look more like skin, which is the coverage I want. I want my skin to still look like my skin, except, you know, maybe even now. That glow from whatever moisture I put under my skin still came through and I really did like that. It just looked like a beautiful finish. But overall, I was very, very happy with the finish. I just needed to give it a couple minutes. It received a four out of five. It does this last. It looks great. The finish is great. The coverage is solid over cream moisturizer, but does it does it last, right? This did not slide off my face. I have to tell y'all, by the end of the day, it almost looked better than how it did at the beginning of the day. I don't know why, I don't know how, I don't know what was going on there, but it happened more than once. The wear test was phenomenal. It received a five out of five on the scorecard. Total score here, it originally was a 19 out of 30. The scorecard has since been smushed. Now it's up to 20. Now the score is a 15 out of 20. It is now time for my final verdict. Would I buy this again? You know, if there wasn't dimethicone, I absolutely would. Yeah. My face by the end of the week or so of testing, I had little red dots. That's what happens. That's just the telltale sign that there's dimethicone in something on my skin. This is a really fantastic foundation and I actually, I'm not sure if I like it more than the skin tint. That did a 180 for me. I didn't really like it so much at the beginning and it's grown on me. I know a lot of people are crazy about it. It just hits right on some skin types. I think I would lean more towards this. I preferred the coverage here. I preferred that it was a little less shiny and dewy. Because of that, it was a bit more versatile. I wish it didn't have dimethicone. So for serum foundation products, this was one of the ones that I actually liked more than others that I've tried. I've tried a bunch of them. There are a few others out there that I could recommend to you if you're interested in this kind of a situation. So you're looking at foundations with skincare ingredients that are a little bit thinner. They aren't the thicker kind. There's the Juice Beauty Serum Foundation I've mentioned quite a few times. The Han CC Cream, not a foundation, but mine as well be. And I don't know why they say cream because it really comes out more like a liquid. And maybe they don't, they just say serum. That's right, Brittany. Don't get mad at the brand your homework. And then there's one from Jane Iredell, which is their Liquid Minerals Foundation, which at first I totally panned and then I ended up loving and using and going through several bottles of. So that's what I think about the Ilya Truskin Serum Foundation. What do you think about this foundation? Let me know in the comments below and let us know what your skin type is. It also really helps in terms of context. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and if you have friends or loved ones that are on this journey or trying to figure out how to clean up their routine, share the video if you think it's going to help them too. I will see you all right back here real soon. Until then.